Hello and good afternoon. Hi, this is Anthony. Yeah, what's going on, man? Hey, brother, how are you? Doing fantastic. I love it when the rock stars are on time. That means when I when I buy a ticket, you're hitting that stage right at, at 11 p.m. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not coked out 20-year-olds, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to give you a kudos on that album cover, man. This, this is the kind of album cover that I grew up just idolizing because this is the kind of stuff that would make me drive one or two hours just to go see a band play. Oh, hell yeah, man. Right on. Putting it oh, yeah. putting it together. What, what what were you guys in the studio together, or was it one track at a time because of the COVID? Oh no, brother. We stayed active through the whole thing. Nice, nice. Yeah, we never we never quit. We we had a studio in Los Angeles that basically flipped the bird to the <laughs> to, to, to the man and said, "You guys come as much as you want," and we did. <laughs> well, then, then maybe that's the reason why I keep hitting repeat when when I listen to the songs because you know because you've got that camaraderie right there. You were looking at each other. Yeah. Hell do, yeah. Do you feel, do you feel the same way on your side of it? Because I mean, you're you're so up close and personal to every single song, and we're we're just getting them. Oh yeah, no, I I, I definitely uh, I definitely feel it for sure, and and um, it, you know, it's just the way we make our songs, man. It's the way we come up with them. It's the way we write. It's it's uh, we just have our own way of doing it, and and when when we try to do it differently, we we always lose something, mm -hmm. and. And we always go back to the original formula. So whose idea was it to give the Americana flavor to uh, Hair the Dog? Because I love how attractive that song is. Going to be very surprised. So one of our good friends, um, good friend now, I should say, uh, is a multi-platinum producer, Timothy Eaton. Mm -hmm. um, he's worked with everybody from Skinner to Motley Crue, Kiss, the Almond Brothers. I mean, just everyone you can imagine. And um, he uh, got wind of us and wanted to meet us and then we had dinner a couple of times uh the couple of us from the band and their founders and uh he said listen i got a song idea that i think you guys would kill because i was gonna i was gonna give it to like i think he said velvet revolver or somebody oh, wow. at the time and and uh, he goes but i think you guys should do it and um so he let us have an idea of what it was and he told us about hair of the dog you know son of a bitch and and uh but he says it's gonna have a spin on it though he goes, and you guys are going to love it. So we went in there and dropped all the recordings, and he got in the vocal booth with me and, and just had me saying, you know, specific words and lines and high phrases, raspy, nice. you know, deep and dark, you know. And uh, so we, we, we did it all together. I sang all the, the normal verses, and, I mean, the finished product was freaking amazing. Yeah. You know? Well, it, I guarantee you people are going to be getting speeding tickets when they're listening to this song, and I just want to know if the band's going to cover our, the cost of those speeding tickets. Yeah, you know, I could probably get you a rubber bracelet or something that says six gun towel. <laughs> but I can't really promise paying the bill on that one, man. <laughs> well, I, I love this the, the twist that you put on the whistle blows. Um, you know, it's it's got a slow, laid back kind of southern vibe. And I kept saying, because I'm here in the South, and, and, you know, I know what that guitar sounds like here in the South. You really oh, yeah. bring that forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite songs. I mean, it really is. Um, I just. I really wanted to hear that twang, man. I, yep. I just, you know, and, and we found it. We found the sound, and, um, and we were able to put it together for that. And, yeah, I just want, I wanted to tell that story, man, that a lot of people in parts of the country would understand. You know, you're just, you're, you're, done, you're done where you've been, and, and now you want to go, and you want to check something else out. And really, anywhere you go, anywhere you put your foot down is, is your new home until it's not, you know. And uh, it's just, it's just a romantic story to me. You know? Yeah. The name of the album is Rebels and Rogues. The thing that's really interesting about this is that you, you allow those guitars to be the fifth member of the band. In other words, they stand out strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing for us. We've always been known as a very powerful guitar-backed band. And, you know, it, there's a lot of bands have lost that. You know, everybody wants to just be this turnkey, perfect product, you know, and and follow what everybody else is doing. And, you know, we just wanted to kind of stay old school with our stuff, you know, bring, bring some new sound, mix it in with the old flavors of, of, of the past and, and stay nice, loud and proud with it because people want to get blown away, man. They, they want to rock. <laughs> well, the song magic man is definitely one of those songs. I'll tell you the part that really caught my attention is when you talk about a thousand eyes are watching me. Did you write that song while out on the road? Um, no, I actually wrote it in studio, man. Um, you know, uh, it's it just it's just weird how the writing comes to me because sometimes I'll just be at home watching a documentary. I mean, when I wrote um, uh, Bad Man and when we wrote uh, The Creek, it, I was watching 
documentaries. I, I was watching a documentary about Evil Knievel for Batman, and, yeah. and uh, I was watching a documentary about Leonard Skinner when I wrote The Creek. So if you if you listen to the words closely, it kind of tells the story of Leonard Skinner in The Creek, and it kind of tells the story of Evil Knievel and Batman. And um, and as far as going to Magic Man, I I just we we were talking one day and i was like man how cool would it be to have like an acdc style song <laughs> you know with the with the guitar riffs and everything going on and and they started doing it and as they started playing the riff i said that's the riff right there i yelled it out i said just keep doing that and i start writing literally and and i'd say 80 percent of our songs have been written that way where they just came up with a riff and studio messing around and i said keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that and i started writing words to it wow. and then boom we have we have a song in, in an hour later we actually have a the a song with, you know, the, the first version of vocals and all that stuff, but you know, it changes 15 times, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, it's, 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 it's exciting. It's fun. You know, and we've always done it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, it's incredible when, when it's, it's down on paper and then you're sitting in that room, you can see that engineer in the other room and you look at, you lock in on eyes and, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 here we go. And, and, and all of a sudden oh, yeah. this song just starts happening. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's the best. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, there's no better feeling that at the end of a you get to rehearsal not knowing what the hell you're gonna do and at the end of that night you literally have a song and <laughs> you know and it's just the coolest thing and and it's again it's one of the things I love most about what we do together as a band and and uh, you know we're like any other band we got moments where we want to kill each other yeah. and we got you know moments where it's all been bro hugs you know and and um, but yeah you know we're a family. <laughs> Recording the album is one thing, but when you get to hear the mastered mix, man, what 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 what's that like for you when you're back in that studio to hear it on those big speakers? Oh, just relief, man. Just just relief and and uh, excitement and and satisfaction and you know and and for me the most important thing is when I start getting the responses from the public. You know when they start messaging us and oh my god, this song, that song. You know that that, that you get vindication at that point. Okay, this this isn't all for nothing. You know like it's a hard industry, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's so very few people make it to the absolute top of this industry. And, you know, most people give up a couple of years into it. They just don't, they don't see it through. And, you know, we're going into our seventh year and, and we're starting to really see some progress. And so for me, it's, it's, that's, that's the satisfaction of the completed album and then seeing that the fans actually really love it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and they can't stop talking about it or they're sharing it. Or making us their their profile picture or their their cover photo on Facebook or something, and they do it all the time, and and that's the, that's for me that's that's what makes it worth it. Absolutely. Would you say that great rock is like a diamond? It requires time and the right cut. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's no there's no doubt about it. I mean, if you write, it's like anything else. You know, any profession you're in, if you rush it, you know, you're you're gonna get your boss to come back and say, "Don't no, do it again." I mean, it's it's not right. So for me, it, it's 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 always got to have that final polish, you know, yeah. it's, it's just, you got to listen to it 50 times <laughs> and, and, and listen for anything that's out of place or not right. And, or, you know what, I could do that better, or I could hit that note better, or, you know, Hey, that we could do a better guitar riff right there or a better drum break. And, and, you know, and um, so, so yeah, definitely. Even out on the road, aren't you still constantly working on the songs? Oh, I wrote three songs coming back from our trip on, to the East coast. I mean, literally, wrote three, three, three different songs. And, and it was funny because different parts of the country we were in were, you know, kind of fueled what I was writing, you know? And, um, so yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Always writing. Oh yeah. Because rock, I, I, rock on the East coast is, I mean, that, that's a unique brand. I mean, if they're in New York, you know, you've, you've got, and then compare it to the Southern rock, I mean, completely different parts of the world. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I, and I think that's what I, you know, we, we really are, finding our own home as a Southern rock act. Yeah. I mean, we have some, some great music, but you know, I'm still in that area where I've got no problem making a rock song. And, you know, and I think that's a good thing because I, I think what happens is, is people get labeled one thing and that's great, but then you're cutting off yourselves from other people who might not like that style of music. Right. So I, I've always, I've always enjoyed the fact that we're like this cauldron of music. I mean, we take the very best of rock and roll and the very best of Southern rock and a little bit of blues, you know, yeah. hell man, even, even a little Motown <laughs> and, and, and how, and how I bring it. And, and you put all that shit together and, and that's, that's what makes the magic, you know? And, and, and I, so I, I, I always tell people what music you play. Well, I always tell them, well, we're, we're rock and Southern rock. Yep. 
You yep. know, that, that's the easiest way to identify. Well, look at the way that you guys put Asphalt Cowboy together. There's a lot of exploration going on in that song. Oh, yeah, man. I, I, it's one of my fun songs. You know, I love singing that song. And I, I, I loved I love performing it and, uh, you know, playing at the whiskey, this headline in the whiskey this past Friday. Uh, we had a great show and we had a great turnout and we were it, it just felt great to be back uh, on a stage like that and um, and be able to play all the songs on the album was was so much fun. Don't you think Sunset Strip is getting a, a, a revamp right now? I mean, because it seems like there's a lot of great rock coming from that area that has always provided a lot of real good rock. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of things are changing, and 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 sometimes not for the better. Um, but you know, I I, I do think um, some places still try to keep tradition and, mm-hmm. and and what's what's important. You know, the whiskey is a great place, and it, it's you know it's it's just legendary. You know, and then you got the rainbow. You know, right next down the street. You know, and great food and entertainment. And, and you know, Le- Lemmy used to be there and yeah. every day. And you know, and then now the Viper Room is going to be gone. So the oh. Viper Room is getting torn down, and they're. They're take, tearing down the whole block and they're making some some high rise, uh, but they're going to have an actual entertainment venue in it. So that's that's OK. But, you know, the Viper Room was a was a really cool spot, too. And so a lot of it's a lot of it's leaving. You know, the hot spot now is Tennessee. And yeah, and yeah. Um, and, you know, we've even looked at that as a band, you know, that, you know, hey, man, if things keep going the way they're going, you know, it, it may behoove us to to go there and, and put roots because, you know, that's that's who that's who we're trying to impress right now. And it. It's going to be a lot easier being there to do it. Well, you're right about Tennessee, though. I, I've talked with a lot of bands that do that have moved to Tennessee only because, I mean, you can't ask for a better songwriting circle. I mean, it's they're everywhere and they're willing to share. Yes, yes. I mean, you're surrounded by the, the you know, the people that you're trying to be, the people you're trying to emulate and it, it's and the lifestyle and, and everything like that. I mean, you know, listen to a lot of our music, man. It, it tells a lot of stories. I mean, a lot of Southern stories and you know, to be in that mix every day, it, it's going to be anything. It's just going to be good because it's, it's also going to allow our brains to expand and, and be better at writing, you know, so. Yeah. You, you touched on Bad Man, the song written about Evil Knievel. Um, my, in my notes, I go, I could actually hear the song being sang back to the band. That, in other words, that the live audience is going to be singing it to you. Yeah, we yeah, haven't had that one happen yet, but we have, we have had the audience sing Remember My Name with us. Uh, we have that we have had audience sing uh, Red Blooded American with us. Yeah. Um, so and that's that and wasted time. I'll never forget that was the first song I ever heard the audience singing with us. And I'll never, it gave me chill. I was like, holy crap, they're actually listening <laughs> to our music. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I swear to God that you know since the lockdown and stuff like that, it's not that just they're listening to the music; they're listening to the words. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, and and that's another thing with me is I I, I try to. I, I literally am a storyteller in almost every song we have. It's telling a story. And if you actually listen to the words, it literally is a story from beginning to end. And, and I always try to end them happy. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> they ever, you know. Yeah, but see, but, that, um, that's the fun and the design of it all, man. Because, I mean, when you're sitting there in that studio and, you, and you're letting your, you know, your creative fly, I mean, I mean it's, it's amazing to see what happens. Oh, yeah, totally. Well, I'm a, I'm a movie and TV buff, you okay. know, and, and, and I'm, always, I'm always trying to – my favorite TV shows or, you know, my favorite movie, you know, if my, if, if my music was going to be on that TV show, this is the song that they would use, you know, and like, you know, the life sons of anarchy all yeah. the way. Remember my name, supernatural, the TV show, you know, with, with Dean and Sam and all those guys, you know, and, and, and bad man, you know, evil Knievel. And, and so I, I try, I really like doing that. You know, again, the Creek, Leonard Skinner, I, I, I just try to tell stories because I think some, I think a lot of music has lost that, yep. you know, you get, you get mumble words or you get just random, whatever made sense or rhymed goes in a song and it doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, and, and, and I, and we, we lost the storytelling in our music and I, and I really enjoy doing that. And you know, it's so interesting you, that you bring that up because there, you know, some of the greatest poetry on the planet doesn't rhyme. It, it, it tell you know it, it tells the emotional connection is what it does and but but it's like I, they didn't have to rhyme yeah exactly and you know you can make any word work it's just how you sing it right and um you know it, it's it's so I, I just really enjoy doing that man I, and and it's I, I guess it's my style I don't know yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I totally get that because because I do a lot of voiceover work and like if I'm doing a commercial for the Charlotte Motor Speedway, um, I remember uh, in a voice class the guy goes, "You can you can put as much energy as you want into it. Just tell the story. Don't just sit there and read a bunch of words about the Charlotte Motor Speedway." Exactly. Exactly. 
exactly. Yeah. 100%. So I, I, you, you must have been reading my notes because the uh, Rebels and Rogues, I put in here, I go, God dang, this would be a great show. And this is the, the soundtrack. And then that's only just for season one. And then, then you go to season two and you give us another album with another soundtrack. <laughs> I'm good with that, bro. <laughs> Let's find you know, Yellowstone. You listening? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's such a wide open world right now for all forms of creativity. And it's amazing how uh, you know all the mediums are working together to, to locate it and, and to put it out there. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, it's just, it, yeah, the, uh, we really got hit with a void. And, you know, and that's why we're, we're really hoping that we continue to go the, the path that we're going and, you know, trying to put these shows together across the country and, and, you know, continue to do the work that we like to do, helping our veterans and, and, you know, and, and, and our community and, you know, fundraisers and charity work. And so we really, we really try to do the right thing. And, and we, we're just really hoping that that void that was created by this, this mess that, some that our music that we've been working on is going to get picked up somewhere. Absolutely. Now, are you hoping for radio airplay or are you putting everything into Spotify and iHeart? Oh, and all yeah. those no, we're, we're definitely looking for radio airplay. I mean, let's yeah. face it. Half, half the country still listens to FM radio. Yep. And, and, um, and we, so far we've been pretty lucky. I mean, we actually have, uh, different stations around the country. I've had people just as recent as last week from Canada and wow. Vermont. Vermont, they said they're playing our music in the grocery store. Ah. Um, <laughs> Canada was on FM radio. Washington State FM radio in Nevada, they played us. Um, you know, Iowa, they played us. I mean, so we're getting played around the country, That's and nice. you know, and it's pretty neat. You know, like especially when someone says, "Yeah, they were playing this song," and I was just like, "That's great." You know, like that's. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm still living in a tent under a bridge in Los Angeles, but you know, one day I might not have to live that way. You know, the, <laughs> the, the music might actually pay my bills one day. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Wouldn't that be a dream come true? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, where can listeners go to to find out more about the band, the album, the tour, everything, so they can give you guys some love? And I'm sure you've got some merch. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we 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 have a humongous line of merch, and um, but sixgunsal.net is the intro or the website, and you can get to the store. You can see upcoming shows. You can buy tickets. Um, you can do anything on that site. You can reach out to the band if you have to. Of course, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Oh, wow. um, we're on um, our YouTube channel got corrupted somehow. I don't know what the hell happened. So it had to actually get taken down, and we had to start from scratch which sucks, but, uh, you know, we, we have our YouTube that's coming back up around again. We don't do Twitter. Twitter's just, you know, too much, uh, on, on the outer spectrum of what we want to do. And, yep. um, um, but yeah, so we're pretty much available. Everywhere. And of course on iTunes, Apple music, Amazon, Spotify, you know, Pandora, we're on all that stuff as well. I love it. Anthony, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I would absolutely love to come back and talk with you. I had a blast, and uh, you just let me know when when and where, and I'll be there. Absolutely. You'd be brilliant today, okay? All right. Thank you, brother. It was awesome talking with you.